So, it's 2019. Uh, three members of Mountain Man Base make their way to Switzerland for one last year of the season. It's been a great season so far. We head to Switzerland. We head to the Eiger, a very famous uh, a spot, a bit of a mecca for, uh, for jumpers. Uh, it's at the end of the season, myself and Dave and Josh, we head out there. Uh, just absolutely just a stunning place. Dave's been there many a time for me, just one experience. The Eiger itself, uh, it, uh, the exit point is what we call the Mushroom. It's a very iconic uh, exit point and very inter inter interesting to get to. Not only the climb, which is about three to four hours of climbing, I'm not the climber myself, that's Dave's sort of experience, so he helped me and Josh get up there. Um, the climb itself, as you can see, it's pretty gnarly. However, the exit point... It wasn't the North Face, we should just... Yeah, we, 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 pretty much, <laughs> we, we, took the, we took the easy route up, but again, uh, climbing along the way itself. That is the mushroom. To get onto the mushroom, you've got a steel cable, you've got to sort of get across it, slide across it, and you've got Dave doing something he's always wanted to do, which is hang off it. I love a good dangle, and where better to dangle than on the Eiger mushroom, right above the North Face, which is... It's a, a, a twitchy place to be, let's just say that. So you do get people jumping across if they're feeling brave, uh, not me. Uh, I slid across as well. The preparation, before we do any of these missions, we always like to check the weather. That's really key. Uh, again, end of the season, sometimes the elements can be against us. Yeah. It was the very end of the season, and we'd kind of had some intel that maybe the season had finished. Yeah. But, you know, part of the mountain man based thing is to, you know, look at, make the judgment, and we still had a window. But we kind of needed to get this done by about <laughs> midday of the day that we claimed. So we had a bit of a kind of a slim, yeah. slim window of opportunity. Yep, so we're all, we're all gearing up, and the great thing about having our Dave, the team, he looks after all the stuff that we don't really need to know about, but he's there just to help us. So we, we gear up, we, we get on top, and then what do you see, Dave? Well, the weather window that we've got, it, like I say, it was quite tight, and I looked over my shoulder, and I could just see this front, this cloud system coming in. And uh, I mean, that's all well and good, because the lads are going to jump off, but actually, I'm not going to be jumping off. I'm going to be climbing back down. So, you know, that's, that's the kind of the cross I bear often in the team. Yeah. So, we jumped. What an amazing experience. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I've uh, got a, tra a big tracking suit there. Uh, wingsuit flying or proximity flying scares the hell out of me, so I've got a nice little tracking suit. What a jump. I landed. Uh, as a lot of people know here, I do like my social media. Unfortunately, on opening, my camera fell off. So that's why you didn't see it. We landed, me and Josh absolutely celebrated, and we just sat there for about 10, 15 minutes, just taking like, everything in. We gathered all our equipment up, and we started walking. And we thought, we'll take one last look at what we accomplished. Turn around, the Eiger is no longer there. <laughs> it's basically, it's gone. So and I actually just turned to Josh and said, I think we just killed Dave. Well, as you can see, they didn't just kill Dave, but it was a bit of an epic experience trying to get back down. We've got a fixed rope section to climb. And yeah, the, as, as per normal, Dave's left alone up the Eiger without a paddle, if you like. And I've got to find my way back. But I did find my way back, uh, got down. That's maybe a, a tale for the pub. But uh, eventually regrew up with the lads. I'm covered in dust. I think I must have bum slid half the way down the Eiger. Uh, and, you know, got back to, to meet with the team and sort of debrief how it went. Yeah, it was great to see Dave alive. I was really happy about that mission success. What we like to do after every single jump is just have a little bit of a debrief about, talk about things. And safety has always been paramount to the team. Leaving up Dave wasn't really the best option that we wanted to do. But that's, that's what he does. And it's sort of like, why can't we jump with Dave? I mean, he doesn't jump himself. That's going to take you a bit of time to get through that process. So we thought, we'll get a tandem. And we're getting there, he'd love that, it'd be great. So that was like in the pub, we thought, yeah, that's a great idea. Mm. But the, the seed was sown. And I think, what was the operation called in the end? Operation... Don't leave Dave, don't leave, don't, yes, operation don't leave Dave behind, <laughs> don't wasn't leave it? Dave so, behind. Yeah. That's become the unofficial motto of the team. So yeah. that's really where the idea started from there. So, base, how many base jumpers have we got in the audience? <laughs> Come on, if you're base jump, you like to tell people and stuff like that. That's because there's not many people, so I can maybe rub on a bit more anyway. So what is base? It's an acronym. It stands for building, antenna, span, bridges, and earth. If you're old school, uh, to get your base number, you have to do all four, and then you can send away from it. But in my eyes, if you do any of them, you're still a base jumper. Yeah. So what do we do?
So pretty awesome stuff, as you can see. I mean, the UK has a wealth of opportunity for all this type of stuff. And that's where Mountain Man Base really kind of came to the fore, uh, founded in Britain. Um, a little bit of a funny backstory. So we're now quite a, a big collective. There's a kind of good, str strong core team. Uh, but back about five, six years ago, I, I was, I'm not a base jumper per se. Uh, I'm more of a mountaineer and a photographer. And I just happened to be uh, pra planning to get more into kind of climbing photography uh, out in North Wales, which is near where I live. And I remember I was, I was in Land Dudno, uh, the Great Orm. Anyone knows kind of the North Wales coast? It's, it's, it's quite an imposing place with cliffs, but they're not very big. And I just remember I was, I was there on a, on a picnic, actually, family picnic, and I saw these two guys kind of peering over this edge. And I kind of went over to them and said, what have you lost? Have you lost something? And I said, oh, we're going to jump off. I said, jump off what? <laughs> <laughs> and I evidently gathered that this is base jumping in the UK. And I, I, to this, you know, this point, I had no idea you could do this. So I said, just, just give me a second, I'll get my camera. So I went and got my camera, took some shots. And I, basically, from there, I started following uh, certainly Mountain Man, who's our colleague Josh was the original Mountain Man, and followed him around, living in a van with him you know, taking pictures and just starting to kind of get a sense of what base was about. And I think around about this time, Hans then sort of joined the team and we started to, to grow the collective. Uh, so actually, Hans, you want to tell us a bit about your background? Yeah, so my uh, skydiving background, I started 26, uh, six, uh, six years ago at Tilstock. I know we've got a Tilstock collective. Yeah. Uh, excellent stuff. Um, uh, really where I progressed was I joined the military as a, uh, as a junior instructor, as a um, junior staff and then gained all my qualifications all the way up to examiner. I know Brucey, a lot of you know Brucey, he does call me the destroyer of dreams when you come on courses. But you know, if you pass with me, you've got that good tick in the box. In terms of base jumping, I've been jumping roughly about 10 years. It was a very slow start, uh, just with my career and all the rest of it. It does say expedition leader on the board. But I think that's more about booking Airbnbs. <laughs> yeah, Dave always says, expedition leader, you just book Airbnbs. I was like, well, there's a bit more to that than Dave. Um, I look after the safety, I look after the team members, all the rest of it, because base jumping for us is about being free and doing what you want to do. But as a collective, our ethos is looking after each other and safety is really paramount. We, all, we all do high risk sports, even skydiving. We don't like to lose friends. Yep. You want to tell our friends here about a little mishap you had? Yeah, I did. I mean, some of you are aware that I did have a bit of a mishap in 2020. Again, part of what we do is we open up new exit points. Um, stupidly, I went by myself. Okay, on the very top, I had phone signal. I jumped, misjudged the landing by roughly about a foot, and it almost cost me my leg. Um, the scary thing was, got my phone out, my phone signal. My car's 300 metres away in the middle of nowhere. I had no other option to literally crawl all the way to my car with a broken leg. Got to my car, checked my phone signal, still no phone signal. I'm going to have to drive to the hospital. Um, you're probably asking yourselves, was it an automatic? It was, and I had to change gear five times with a broken leg. That's you know, just, just horrible to think about. But the recovery was absolutely awesome. I had Dave, the team, all family members, and some of you, you know, helped me through that recovery. And then within nine months, I think it's the top uh, left-hand picture there, that's me coming back after only after nine months of, um, mm. of recovery. And so it was, it was a hard psychological recovery. Yeah, so <laughs> what I didn't tell Dave is that I, we were just going to go back and look at the site. I actually snuck my base rig inside the car. He had no idea that I was going to go jump in. Uh, and literally, as I pulled that out and walking up, he just had a, you know, just my normal sort of uh, bag on the back. He just, yeah, it was an interesting view, wasn't it? It was great. I mean, we made a little film about it, which is on our website, but also we've got a magazine article out of it as well. And just, you know, such a great story. Um, I mean, a funny thing, which Hans doesn't always talk about, or maybe he does to certain people, is while he was recovering in the hospital, he, he took up knitting. Do you want to tell us about your house? Yeah, I mean, I never thought in my life I'd take up knitting and the rest of it, but I'd learned how to make beanies. Again, thank you for some of you that, that bought them. Uh, and yeah, so it was like another sort of skill yeah. in, inside it. So yeah, a bit more about Dave. So uh, that's a nice segue, actually. So talking about hats, well, I wear many hats in the team. Um, I, I don't talk about myself as a bass jumper. I'm not a, officially a bass jumper. I'm more of a mountaineer, a photographer. I'm also a writer. So I've you know, got some magazine articles out there. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I, I've been along on perhaps 200 bass jumps, maybe more than that. 50 exits across the UK, so all sorts of different locations. And in the last few years, when I've been getting to grips with the base side of things, I'm starting to understand more what makes a base jumper tick, in as much as you can do that. I'm also a psychologist as well, so I study. Um, right, I'm just, I'm just, 
you got any forgetting you did some skydiving? Well, I d oh. yeah. So I, I basically, after all this time uh, watching other people jump, I kind of thought, and, and being stuck up the eye, I thought, well, it's about time. I, I guess I got airborne. So I thought, well, I, I don't really want to have to go down that route per se. So I'll, I'll take up paragliding. So that's a, you know a, a slightly more accommodating thing for what I, what I want to do. So I'm, I'm just starting to get into paragliding last year, and then Hans rings me up and he says, uh, "What you what you do next Wednesday?" I'm thinking, I think I'm going paragliding. I said, oh, why, what, you got a mind? He says, you're, you're doing EFF next Wednesday. I'm like, oh, brilliant. Well, what's EFF? <laughs> 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 uh, and cut to a week later, and, and I'm jumping out of a plane with hands. Uh, he's, he's good like that. He likes to get me in the air, and he did. And that's, that's me uh, from Tilstock, in fact, uh, jumping out of the plane at 10,000 feet. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm indebted to Hans for getting me airborne. And then, of course, a month later, I get a phone call. What are you doing next week? Uh, we're going base jumping. So anyway, you know, there's, there's a progression here. I don't know what's next. Am I going to space at the end of the year? <laughs> or, or, I don't know, maybe. So um, yeah, so and, and just as I mentioned, I'm a writer. I'm a scientist as well. So I really, I've got really behind the whole base jumping side of things. I, I'm fascinated by the mentality. But I, as a scientist, I want to understand the kind of mechanisms of it, you know, the brain, how it functions under stress. And, and I learn so much. So that I'm all about promoting, you know, base jumping and mountain man base in a, in a good light to kind of get rid of some preconception, I guess, which I would have had as well before getting involved in the base community. So yeah, so do you want to tell us a bit about the, the accomplishments of? of yeah, base? so yeah. base jumping back in the 80s, 90s, it was very underground. I know at some drop zones you weren't even allowed to talk about it. Uh, so it was very much you had to go around sneaking around, and it was sort of like. Uh, exit points were very secret. Um, we've come a long way since then, you know, safety, all the rest of it. So uh, over the years, uh, we've come up with a, well, the, some of the uh, base jumpers have come up with a base guide, and that a guide, it tells you where exit locations are, how to get there, how to set up heights, all that sorts of thing. 2018, there were 53 exit points, okay? As a team, Mountain and Base, as of today, we opened up over 100 exit points. I'm so proud of the team for what we achieved. We've only one little boo-boo and I was by, yeah. <laughs> by myself, okay, but no, no dramas with those, so it was an awesome, awesome Yeah, and, and as, as you saw on the previous showreel, like some of the UK exit, the, the places we've got in the UK are fantastic, and we're particularly proud of, you know, accomplishments such as getting all the, the three highest peaks, you know, the highest peak in England, Wales and Scotland, uh, so our, our colleague Josh jumping off Scarfell, uh, finding the highest kind of base exit off Snowdon and, and, and the Ben, the, you know, Ben Nevis in Scotland. It's, it's such an iconic place. And we've done it in winter and summer. But just as a team, I mean, I remember early on in my journey with Mountain Man Base, our colleague Josh sort of uh, sending me a, a video and uh, evidently he just jumped Ben Nevis. I'm like, oh, wow, I was a bit disappointed not to have been there when he did it. Um, and I thought, that's brilliant. And then a couple of hours later, or maybe three, four hours later, he sends me the video again. I'm like, why has he sent me it again? Oh, no, he'd gone back up and jumped it again. <laughs> He's so, like, into it and whatever. So, you know, these are the sort of things we're really proud of. And, and, and just to, to experience the UK with this perspective, it's, it's blown my mind. You know, it's really taking things to the next level. Um, uh, but there's a fun side to it as well, as you'll see on the news clip in the next, next yeah. section. The glass ceiling at 10 to 8. Ah, I, I love a picture of the papers. And this one is Hans Donner. Can you see him there? So basically, he's launched himself here off um, Arthur Street, of course. Uh, this is the extinct volcano standing above Edinburgh. Uh, and it's the first ever time someone's parachute jumped off it. Uh, he's 39, apparently, he's an ex serviceman. And he landed safely among safely. watching spectators. Safely. Oh, safely. So, yeah. <laughs> No, I have a theory. Could you imagine that we didn't jump off far enough? Or could you just, I mean, also landing amongst the spectators, that kind of give up the spectators as well. But I'm trying to picture Arthur uh, Seed. It doesn't feel like it has enough of a drop exactly. to, to be able to jump off to do the. Is that actually? Yeah, to set your parachute off. Well, anyway, he did it and he's fine. So yeah, that's the <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I love media, the, the good and bad. We'll come to that in a few seconds. So Arthur Seat, another fantastic uh, jump. Uh, we did two exit points on that one. Again, uh, the first time it's ever been jumped. Uh, for us as a team, we like to say if you do the exit point or you do the first jump, you get to name it. Uh, I think it was... Uh, uh, the Queen's Jewels. Queen's Jewels and... Tea with the Queen. Tea with the Queen as well. So, yeah, but what an awesome experience. I'm ex-military, and it was nice to actually jump on Armed Forces Day. 
Looking back at the video, is it Steph McGowan, I think Steph it was? McGowan. McGowan. Yeah. Do you remember what she said about the crowd? The crowd down there, it was just They insane. were going nuts. It was, they were <laughs> absolutely going insane. It was literally one of the most hardest jumps I've ever done. So we've got a bit of a video there. I mean, just, she said, you know, well, landing in the crowd. We, 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 we pride ourselves on being the very best. Let's see how the crowd reacts. Oh, there's no one there. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So making the point of this video, it's very easy for the media just to get things absolutely completely wrong. And that's where Dave really yeah. comes in and pushes the focus and get on the right information. As we all know, skydivers, we, we used to get quite a bit of bad press. It's getting better. And the game was a same with base jumping. We're trying to promote that like, good, safe culture and all the rest of it. There is yeah. actually a cyclist in there. You, you can't probably see it. <laughs> but actually, I think that was Steph McGovern herself. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, a great jump, but as I say, it just goes through what the actual media can do itself. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that was a few years ago. We're, we're, we're each year, we're, we're doing more and more exciting stuff, and we are getting our stuff out in the, in the press. You know, it was shameless plug there, but, um, you know, it, there's, there's a real appetite for that. And, and last summer, we, did, we got some great stuff in Scotland, and we're doing kind of bigger and better, and we actually went across several of the isl uh, islands off the western coast of Scotland, such as Skye, jumping new cliffs there, jumped the Isle of Mull for the first time, which, you know, very proud it's in this Daily Star. I mean, who wouldn't be proud to get a, their photograph in the Daily Star? Um, and the Isles of Egg, uh, you know, some of these islands are not so well known, but you'd be amazed when you, you get out there on these missions. So we're all about these missions and pushing the next sort of boundaries and so on. And what I want to go into from there is the kind of heritage and pay homage to the past and um, some of the pioneers. Now, a particular person that we really sort of like to shout out is Andy Guest. Uh, many people here will know who Andy Guest is, very you know, prominent in the but skydiving scene. I don't scene. think many people know how much he put into the sport. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and back in the, well, 40, just over 40 years ago, uh, the 40th anniversary of the first British base jumps, Andy was a very key figure, and he got the British base number one. Um, and his kind of in innovative uh, approach to base jumping uh, was acknowledged by Carl Benish, who is you know, the founding father of US base back in the 80s, who said, Andy, you've made the world jumpable. You know, so really attestable, uh, attesting to the, the capacity to do low altitude base jumping, but still spectacular stuff. So we went back uh, to, be, to be ahead where this all kind of started in the 80s uh, as the first British uh, cliff or the first British a base exit from an earth object, if you like. Um, and we went back with Andy, he talked, we made a little film, we talked with Andy about the, the heritage and how it came about. And this little clip will show you how he jumped it back then and then he jumped it again with us. I would like to say I'm not sure who was more nervous on that particular <laughs> jump because me and Dave were at the top organising everything and I think we just look at each other with a 
So yeah. I'm like, yeah. Well, just that moment of kind of you know tying together the history and the modern. And, and this, I love this quote from Andy. Uh, it's in the film that we made about it called The Moment. And, and this speaks to me as a psychologist and you know, someone very interested in the mi mindset and mentality and how we can kind of get into that, that moment, if you like. So you can be on that exit point for five minutes, battling all these voices in the head. And all of a sudden, a calmness comes over you and you realize, it's good, let's do it. We used to call that the moment. And again, I mean, that, that's particularly poignant to me because I went back to be ahead with Hans and the team in last year in August, and I got to stand on that edge myself, exactly where Andy had jumped from and was talking about at the moment. And, and as a psychologist as well, it's, I wanted to be able to get myself into the right headspace because actually all this journey of mine through the base community, and it was, it's cool to be involved with, it, you know, have a kind of vicarious experience of base jumping. And I like to think I'm adventurous, and as a psychologist, like I said, think that I um, kind of know what, what it's all about. But until you actually do it yourself, you, you're not really kind of practicing what you preach, if you like. So I'll just give you a little overview of the science, and this is something I talk about in, in a lot, of, lot more detail and write about. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a psychologist, I'm also a neuroscientist, uh, and I'm very interested in the physiological sort of response to stress and how we overcome that what's the mindset we use, what's the kind of techniques we can use to get into that headspace. And I actually had to put this into practice myself. Now, a quick explanation of this graph. So we're looking at heart rate. I'm actually wearing a chest uh, heart strap at the moment, which is measuring ECG. And what we can do with that data, we can translate that into an index of stress, if you like. I'll kind of <coughs> keep it in a, a, a quite a graspable kind of way. And what's happening, where, where the graph's dropping low, this actually corresponds with uh, low, what's called low heart rate variability. And the more variable your heart rate, the more you can deal with stress, you can bring calm into the system. This is based on uh, research with skydivers, which has shown that when we have this stress response, we go into what's called the fight or flight, which we're all familiar with. And that's kind of like the seesaws tipping towards a high arousal state, intense. You're kind of going into this sort of instinctive response. But actually research with skydivers, has shown that experienced skydivers can balance this, this system out, something called the parasympathetic nervous system, but I won't go into depth on the, the terminology. But that basically is, is balancing with a calming aspect of the system with that kind of you know, fight or flight. Uh, actually, it's something they call excite and delight. So you'll be happy to know when you jump out of a plane, you're being excited and delighted, apparently, and you're co-activating these two parts of the system. So that's something I, I study. Uh, and I want to bring that kind of information back into the team, which is something I do to Dude. help. I must admit, when we first started working with Dave, there's nothing like beyond the edge of an exit point, and then Dave coming in, how you feeling? And I, <laughs> I need to focus on what's going on, but over the, over the time, it has That's got it. better, and yeah. we, we, we call the moment and the, and the cogs. Yeah. You know, the the co oh, yeah, T we, tell them about the cogs, please. So <laughs> Dave works with us quite uh, really well. Uh, I have this thing, I call, it, I call it the cogs. So my moment is called the cogs. It's when I get to an exit point, I'm not going to go into all, all these. I've got like a series of cogs, maybe five or six, depending on the type of jump. And they're spinning really quick until they all line up, and I'm happy with everything. I'm not. Then I'm good to go. And sometimes that can take a couple of a minute, a couple of seconds. Some some jumps, five minutes. Okay, it all all really depends. And again, having mm. Dave on that team is, you know, he's translating it just so it just makes a bit more sense, and it's able just to push us that little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And I, obviously, as a psychologist, I'm I'm the epitome of calm. I can put all these techniques into practice, as you can see, as I <laughs> on my jump. Which is like, and this is part of the thing with having the, 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 the video imagery because you know you watch the video and think, oh, yeah, I was quite calm, and then you freeze frame it <laughs> and you say, what the hell is my hair doing? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, so that's part of what I do, and you know, I'm happy to talk to people more about this in the bar later or whatever. Um, I also, I just want to shout out to my brain. So it's, it's, it's so interesting to me, this. I go and learn how to analyze my own brain. So I've actually imaged my own brain, not while skydiving, uh, not while base jumping, but that's in the lab, reliving the base jumping. And I, I actually believe, just a plug for what I'm doing, I believe this is useful for looking at PTSD and such and so forth. So I do wear many hats. I'm not just the photographer, the, the mountain person, the carrying all the hats down, etc. I'm also a, a sort of a brain scientist as well. So that's enough about me <laughs> and what I'm doing. Um, let's find out more now about the whole tandem process and the preparation for the project. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah, so 
as we said, this really started back in uh, 2019 with, you know, don't leave Dave behind. Uh, we reached out to manufacturers. Uh, they do make them. It is a very hard process. Uh, you just can't just go and say, yeah, I want that time. They won't give it to you. You actually have to prove you have the capability. Uh, some of the manufacturers will even make you go do a course on how to use the equipment. Uh, again, like I said, my background is, is a tandem instructor. That helps a lot. Uh, when we got the equipment, we checked it over. We actually even gave it to some riggers to have a look at it. Again, we are in no way in shape affiliated to British Skydiving. I have to make that very apparent. For me, it was just getting that little tick in the box. It gave me that warm, fuzzy feeling to make sure the equipment was up to standard. Because at the end of the day, I'll be taking him at some point. Or, you know, uh, Josh on the very first one. Got the equipment. Um, it's very easy just to rush into things. And it was like, with that examiner head on, being all sensible, we planned everything out meticulously, didn't we? It was like we had a set of SOPs and a procedure to do everything. So that's it in the back garden there. That's Dave trying it on for the first time. Again, wearing that heart monitor. And I think it pre shot up, didn't it? Because yeah, he realised what was, what was coming you know, quite what, soon. What you didn't show in the video is me actually, you're carrying me with my legs. And like like a little baby. Like, a bit so like <laughs> if you've seen Austin Powers, a bit like mini me on the front. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then it was really about finding the, the right location. Yeah. Um, before that, okay, we've got a base uh, uh, canopy tandem. It is absolutely huge. Just can't jump off it. We need uh, to go down the process. So meet Pumba. Pumba was donated to me by a good friend. Uh, we started with 40 kilograms, make it up to 60 grams on each jump. So maybe about 20 jumps overall. Sometimes I would carry all that weight up to the exit point by myself. Uh, other times we had the team doing it. Uh, I got pretty fit and strong and healthy over the season, but I'll probably need to get back to that at some point. Uh, we, we'd love to have brought Pumba <laughs> along, yeah. but sadly Pumba's no longer with us. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so on the final test jump, we, 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 we took, uh, Pumba didn't, he survived. Uh, <laughs> but again, we have this, we have this van life. Uh, the day before the live, we have Pumba with us, the live uh, jump. Uh, as we're getting ready during the morning shower and all that sort of stuff, we put Pumba, I don't know who it was, I'm not mentioning any names, we put Pumba on top of the van. And when we got to the location, we were like, well, where was Pumba gone? And, and so unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So. There has been reports of sightings on Dartmoor, and uh, I think a, a fox took a fancy to Pumba, so there might be some little Pumba yeah. cubs. Yeah. Those. <laughs> so again, like, like, like I say, the, for us, it, it's all about location. Anyone can jump off a building, a bridge, anyone can base jump. It's how you fly your canopy okay, to the ground safety, what really matters. So it's all about location. So what we talked about before, you know, those 100 plus exit points during that process was looking for the right, okay, landing area for us and making sure that we've got all the, the procedures in that place that we needed to do. This is one of the test jumps that we did. It was up in the Lake District. Uh, I think it was about jump number 15, this particular one. Again with Pumba. Yeah. I was quite excited about that one. Um, yeah, once you, we, once you do jump off, okay, in effect, it is a tandem landing. Yeah, what you don't really notice on that particular landing, it was on a downhill slope, which made it quite, quite interesting as well. So I'm really happy with that. So, oh, I do apologize. So this was the last jump that we did. We went back to Beerhead. That was going to be the location for the very first tandem base jump. Uh, we got there early in the morning uh, with, the, with the team to do the, 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 the final jump. Unfortunately, uh, due to weather conditions, it was really against us. We didn't get to jump. Also, the tide as well, it be, being a beach landing. We pretty much waited all day. And then, as you can see there, it got dark. So the final test jump, just to really test us, it was actually a night jump. Uh, landed, absolutely jubilant. I knew what was going to happen next, because the very next day, we're going to go live. Going back a step, again, I had to carry all that 60 kilograms of weight up to the very top. Dave was very kind to meet me about 100 metres from the top. Yeah, I, I felt like it was my duty to help him that last 100 metres. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for myself, it was all about the safety. So we all know about winds. We have limits within skydiving. Again, it was down to me to set those standards for any of the jumps that we were doing, be it with Pumba, bless his soul, or any of the live uh, candidates or uh, team members, should I say, I set that winds, uh, I believe it was to zero, to three knots, and that was the margin. Okay, on the, each and every test jump that we did, we got really lucky and nothing out of that at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
I'm just going to go back a bit. I get excited. I like to go, go on a little bit too much sometimes. For me, the, the jump, we got the, the live jump itself. We got there the, the, the next day. Uh, the whole team was involved. We went through a whole ju uh, dubious process uh, of uh, walking, talking, and just making sure everything was, was good to go. It was going to be an, an afternoon, so that gave us plenty of time just to rehearse things. Um, and to be honest, it's one of the most incredible jumps I've ever done in my lifetime. I'm not going to talk too much because sometimes I do like to ramble on because I'm going to get to this and then we'll talk a bit afterwards. Pretty much were down there for about 20 minutes. We were just, I, I was just lost for words. I could hear Dave just shouting, just everything at the top. What an absolute achievement, getting goosebumps as we speak now. What you don't really see on that video is off to the right is we had, the rest was it. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, the, the Devon Coast Guard were there. Yeah, so I was so sort of wrapped up in the, in the moment. Yeah. The, yeah, no, actually, I mean, part of the safety aspect of us planning these jumps, especially in the, the sea cliff areas, is to get in touch with the, the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard were already there doing a, a rescue drill, so we actually liaised with them, and they were like more than happy to be there and, and, and witness what we did. Uh, and even passers-by, there was a, a feature in the newspaper came out a week later, and a passer-by had been found by the journalist and said, oh, it was a very professional outfit. They were, had, had radios. So uh, we luckily, we conveyed that professionalism and, and all that kind of thoughtful kind of approach uh, to the public as well which is good good for that yeah so after we celebrated we started walking back up i mean it was just you know stories just everything was just going on everyone had big smiles on their face as we got up to the top to meet dave he was the only person that was not <laughs> smiling because i think he knew what was going to happen yeah, yeah, I knew next what was coming next <laughs> yeah and um, oh, there wasn't enough time to do my jump that day because the, the light had failed by now so now i had the prospect of all the next day because again similar weather conditions the morning was no good so we had to wait all day so i had plenty of time to practice my own sort of practice what i preach as a psychologist to me and get myself in the mindset uh, you know, monitored my heart. And, I would oh. like to say as well, I've <laughs> never heard, Dave likes to talk, okay, he's a better talker than me. I've never heard someone so quiet. It really was. <laughs> yeah. Actually, funny enough, it reminded me of my, uh, the day of my, after my ground school at Tilstock when I was, likewise, had to wait till the evening to actually get my skydive out of the way. But no, it, it was fantastic, as, as you'll see on the clip now. Good to go in three, two, one. See ya! a bit cringeable at the end but you know it's just the raw emotion uh, and luckily we've cut it there because I then go into this kind of high-pitched squeaking thing uh, and the only time I've ever done that is when I've dived on uh, scuba diving on helium but uh, yeah it was fantastic sort of experience and uh, yeah culmination of a long, long journey. So what a process to actually go through from the point where you know we left Dave on top of the Eiger to the point now 
Operation Don't Leave Dave <laughs> has become an excess. So a big pan for Dave. I think pretty much, I think it, it, it takes, takes a lot for, for someone to sort of be strapped, especially onto the front of me, uh, and then put his faith into it. But as I said, he's been around yeah. uh, quite a bit. Yeah, privileged to have uh, been involved. And again, you know, just getting a sense of what base is about. You know, I've done it a very odd way around. Most people would do skydiving for several years and get into base. I just kind of hang around with base jumpers enough to kind of realise, OK, I'm inevitably going to do one. And I did. And yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so. so what's really next for base tandem? It really is. It's, it was meant for the team. There is a possibility that we could take people in the future. OK, open it up to the public. But legislation i literally i'm up to here i'm swamped in it it is just a complete nightmare and you can imagine insurance is quite fun as well i'm starting to do that process but we're way off that yet uh, but for us it really is about you know just making sure that we can take dave and other team members and the rest of it we're trying to get an association together and that's not a base association that is a tandem base use association again trying to make sure that we get the, the right responsibility okay for what we're doing there's also big projects Unfortunately, we can't talk about what we're doing just yet. That's exciting right. stuff on the exciting horizon. Exciting stuff, so just keep, just keep watching. OK, there are some stuff going. Uh, maybe if I have a few beers a bit later, you could probably let me know. But no, no, no. I'm going to tighten it. We do run base courses as well. OK, we do have a certain criteria that you do need to meet, uh, as in skydiving. If you are interested, we do run them in Europe throughout the year. Uh, if you like what you see, you're very welcome to come and chat to us. Would I recommend it? Not really. OK, it is scary, but it's, uh, it's brought me here. So. Yeah, so I d we just want to finish with one, one other extra thing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. Uh, so again, last year was phenomenal. We did so many things. I mean, the tandem was obviously the culmination of all that. Great stuff in Scotland. Uh, you know, we're all about first. Well, we're not chasing firsts for the sake of it, but we're, we're out there pioneering stuff just because we're so into this stuff and seeing what's next on the horizon. So I believe this is a, another first uh, yeah. that's been done. I was up in Glencoe with some of the lads and I believe it's the first CF jump with a flag, yeah. base jump with a flag. To also add to that, we believe that we've done a lot of firsts. I'm not going to be big-headed enough to think that there are obviously old base jumps that have probably done this, but this is the first documented. Mm. So this is yeah. not trying to put anyone else down, but this is what, as mm. I said, this is what we believe that is the first. Yeah, well, we're so yeah. enthusiastic to be doing these things. It's yeah. just amazing to, to do this. So let's, let's just yeah. see this clip. Any CF jumpers? Any crew jumpers, crew dogs in the crowd? No? Okay. So that was such a proud, again, for me, so proud to see that happening. You know, I, I've been upschooled in all these things. I, I have no knowledge about skydiving, really, base jumping, anything, but it's just great to have absorbed all this and, and become part of this, this kind of uh, expo as well. So, yeah, that's us. That's the Mountain Man base story to date. And there's the, the rest of the story is yet to be written. Um, obviously, you can see our social media if you're interested to find out more what we're doing and talk to us more. Uh, and yeah, I think it's just, it's fantastic. Yeah, for myself, it's, uh, I just want to first of all say thank you very much to British Diving for letting us have the stage and talk about our passion, which is base jumping, and it's, it's quite nice to uh, get it over. But also uh, a big thank you for myself, Dave, and the rest of the actual team uh, for everyone that's helped us on this journey. Uh, a few of the lads, they've actually given up their full-time jobs uh, to be with us and help us to get where we are today. Uh, and it's, it just gets better and better and better. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it just really about happy about the team and the way it's, it's going. So, but again, a very big thank you for, for, for turning up and watching thank us you. as well. So yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> so with that, we can open to the floor for questions to find out more. Is there any questions at all? Just yeah. interested to know if you've done any jumps in the Isle of Wight. I personally have and I don't. I there have been jumps, yeah. I, I've not been down there. Yeah, yeah, Mountain Man Base certainly has, yeah. I've not been along on any of them. I couldn't tell you which, which sites per se, but yeah. definitely. Yeah. All good. Anything else? No? Guys, thank you very much. Oh, we've got oh. you. So we specify 200 skydives. Um, we do take people that have lower jumps, but that would involve one of the instructors coming to your drop zone 
and watching how you fly your canopy. Like I said, anyone can jump off, it's how you fly that canopy, and we have a bit of a chat with you and get, get to know. But Taken, sorry? Where we run the courses? Yeah, yeah. So we probably run, run the courses on the, in the south of France. So yeah. So yeah. But if you want to hit, get some more information, uh, you can speak to us, uh, or you can go to the website and you can find out all the details there. That's not a drama, yeah. Go for it. What kind of wing loading? What kind of wing loading? Yeah. Uh, so wing loading, it, it's it's very much different. It's not skydiving. It's very different. The canopies that we use. Uh, the, my, my normal canopy is a 120, uh, my base canopy is a 285, it's way much bigger. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much into it, but it, it is completely different. I, I know that you're very excited about doing it, <laughs> uh, we've shown that. Uh, we do have a chart, uh, yeah. and then literally when you decide that you're going to go for it, we go through that whole process. It's not just here's a rig, you jump, we weigh you, and you know, all that, again, that safety aspect, which is again really important to the actual team. Yeah. Awesome, cheers. No worries. Anyone? Yes. Are you going to? Are you going to do a solo based? That's a big question, isn't it? I, I don't know. Well, the the mountain man based toys still got a chapter to write. Maybe I'm in that. I don't know. We'll see. It depends if I get a phone call. It, or was, it was hard <laughs> enough to get him to do a skydive. It really was. It was like no, I'm paragliding. It was like uh, it was. It it really was. But for someone to go from paragliding, skydive to base jump, was it within a month? Was it something like that. Let's just say it was a blur. Yeah, it was, it was but, good. But uh, who knows? Yeah. I, I don't seem to be able to say no to things. Yeah. <laughs> I think, are we yeah. yeah. Up there. Hi, Hans. Oh, do you recognise you? How are you, Jacko? Hi, mate. So it's good to see that, like, all the stuff that we taught you at JSAT and that, you know, you've, you've brought it into your, your safe systems of work there, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad that I developed you like that. But, like, how do, you, how do you wrestle with the ethical question of, like, you're inspiring other people to do stupid shit? Um, like, how do, you, how do you convey to them that you have a huge safe system uh, behind you and all of your experience and, and all that sort of stuff? If anyone... Um ask me about base jumping, the first thing I do is I show them all the horrible stuff. How many instructors are there? Yeah, what's the thing they show you when you go on those British uh, skydiving courses? All the horrible stuff, okay? Uh, if you come to me and say you want to base jump, I will show you the horrible videos. They are horrific. I've lost quite a few friends over the years. It's a, it's a very, it's, it is one of the most dangerous sports in the world. We, over a period of time, is we've built, we've got lesson plans, We've got a set of SOPs that we, we run to, and we also we deal with, with weather and all, all that aspect of it as well. In terms of the, I guess when you say about the ethical side, um, it, it's that, I think that's that mindset, because you know, when you first, when you like, look at people that talk about skydiving, it's like, oh, that, that's, that's, that's crazy, you skydive. And then you go to that next level of base jumping, and then you get people who go, oh, that's crazy. So it, it just depends on where your head sort of, your mindset is resting. Is that, Make a bit of sense or not, not really? No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Maybe that's one bluff too tough. No, I see what you're getting at. But yeah. the, like, how are you going to communicate to people that you guys haven't just you know, picked up these rigs um, off the street, sorry, yeah. like gone on eBay or whatever and bought someone's stolen rig? Oh, yeah. So we, we, have, I mean, we have all documentation. You can see it. It's almost like I've tried to make it a bit like British Skydive, but again, we're not associated. And we have, we have books, we have checks, everything else. But so when you come onto it, it feels like a proper course. There's, there's a way of doing things, paperwork checks, things get checked after every single jump. Pretty much like what we did at J JSAT, which is very hard to explain what we do, but it, it is like that. That's what I've taken from my military background, working with the military and put it into practice with the actual team itself. Yeah. I, I am the fun police, when it, and Dave will tell you this. Uh, uh, we work, I'm 42 now, I'm working with really young lads. They literally just want to jump off everything and there's me just going hang on a second let's do a bit of a risk assessment and all the rest of it so that it does you know it does i've got a lot goes into it on that side cool i'm happy to see you're taking the jtac ideology of making skydiving boring and taking it to base jumping excellent <laughs> <laughs> thank you <Rose. laughs> cheers mate good no brief <laughs> uh, any more oh up there oh we've got that thanks jacko no. <laughs> have you ever considered doing body suspension based jumps? Second, sorry? Have you ever considered doing body suspension based jumps? Yes, yeah, so uh, body sus uh, suspension based jumps, that's 
um, you take your rhizome and you attach them to your body uh, and you get its bag deployment so in fact the canopy is attached to your body and you're suspended underneath your own canopy by your skin. Some of the team members have, have done it. Um, I looked at my friend and went, you know what, probably not the best for me. <laughs> the guy that organised it showed me one guy that, that was pretty much the twice the size of me. My team members turned to me and were going, you've got no excuse. However, there is a limit to what I will do, and that, to me, is a no-go. It's, it's just another element. So like we, we talked about that, that headset. Some people think skydiving is crazy, base jumping. That, to me, is, is never going to happen for me. It's just, why would you do it? So it's that level. It's great fun. Sing, sorry? Because it's great fun. It's quite fair. Have you done it? Uh, not base jumping. Oh, but base okay. Uh, so, but yeah, no, as I said, some of the, uh, on our Instagram page, if you want to have a look, it's, there, there's, a, there's a little video on there of doing it. It's quite, it's, yeah, I, it's not for me, but yeah, it's quite special. <laughs> I think we're... Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. That's it. Cool. Well, thanks again, yeah. everyone. Thanks very much. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Is, is anybody developing better kit for it? You know, is anybody interested in doing that? So, uh, we got, I know we've got some old bases or something in the crowd now. Um, going back to the, eight, like the 80s, they were just using skydive gear. Uh, from from uh, then, base gear was being produced. The technology now is, is come is come leaps and bounds. It, yeah, it's a, yeah but who's doing that? So there's uh, proper manufacturers. Uh, we represent uh, Apex Base. Uh, they manufacture um, uh, containers. Uh, the leading manufacturer for canopies uh, is Atair. Uh, yeah, and they've they they're always progressing in the designing. It's and people are testing. Yep, they have people that test it. Uh, our team is not a testing team. That's something that I'm oh, not really. Okay. So that's, I don't want to put those guys to, into that situation. It's not about that for us, but there are people that do t uh, test base canopies. Uh, they'll test them skydiving once they're happy. Yeah. Then they take it onto the, onto the shop floor. Well, thank, yeah. thank you. It really is good to see that there is progression within the actual yeah. sport. It, it is getting a lot safer uh, with the kit. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, is it? Thank you. Uh, so thanks. Again, thanks very, thanks much. very much. Cheers.